Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about how you can overload the increment and decrement operators in C++ for your classes, and we'll do both prefix and postfix versions. If you need a refresher on how these operators work in general, then you can check out the video with the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to create our own objects. And we want to be able to do something like this. We want to be able to say I++ plus plus or plus plus I or I minus minus or minus minus I. Okay. In addition to that, we also want to be able to do something like this. We want to be able to say J equals I plus plus or J equals plus plus I. So we want to be able to increment in all these kind of different ways that is supported by the increment operator. And also we want to be able to decrement in all these different ways that's supported by the decrement operator. So that's what we're going to look at uh, doing. So let's take a look at that and write ourselves a little class. So our class will be class integer. And for this example, it's just going to be something simple. It's just going to be a class that stores an integer variable. So we'll call that integer i. And as part of its public interface, we'll have a constructor. And that constructor will use a default argument, which we'll call x, the parameter for that, and we'll initialize to zero. And then we'll use the little initialization list here. So that way we can just pass to it the x. So in this way, you know, we can instantiate our object in a couple different ways, right? We can either pass it an argument such as this, or we can just leave it without any argument passed to the constructor, in which case the default argument will be assigned, which would be zero. So we'll add that and we'll also add a accessor. So we'll need to do something like int get and we'll simply return the i variable. Now what we need to do is we need to implement these guys. Okay, so the plus plus, both prefix and postfix. So remember that when we do I plus plus, this is the postfix version, and this is going to return the value and then increment. Okay, so we got that, and then we've got plus plus I, this is prefix, which is going to increment and then return. So we have two different types of logic here. They're not the same thing. They don't mean the same thing. So we have to keep that in mind and we have to take that in consideration when we're overloading these operators. Now when we go to overload the operators, just like with all operator overloading, we're going to have that operator keyword and we're going to have the operator that we're actually overloading. So in this case, we'll start with the plus plus. Okay. Now here things are going to be a little bit different in terms of the parameter list. You have to be able to tell the difference between the prefix version and the postfix version. Okay, you'll notice that there's no left-hand side, there's no right-hand side here, so this acts a little bit different. We're not going to be passing some other integer object as an argument to operator plus plus, okay? It's a unary operator. It works on itself. So we're going to have one version that is the postfix version and one that's the prefix version. And so the difference and the way you can tell the difference between the two is whether or not you include a little dummy parameter in here. So it's a do nothing parameter. You don't even name it. You just put the data type in there. And then that's how the compiler tells the difference. So in this case with int, when we put that dummy parameter in there, dummy parameter int, this indicates that this is going to be the postfix version. The empty parameter list indicates the prefix version. So what is going to be our return type for these functions? We'll take a look at what we have here, right? This is the type of statements that we want to be able to write. So what data type is I here? It's type integer. Okay. So what data type is J type integer? So we need to be able to assign an integer to an integer. So our return type here is going to be integer. Okay. And by integer, I mean the name of the class. So we want to be able to assign an integer to an integer. So we need to be able to return an integer. So let's go ahead and put our semicolons there for our prototypes. And then we'll go ahead and start defining these things. And we're going to want to do the decrement operator as well. So we'll just copy and paste this and we'll just switch this to minus minus. This kind of is different, right? This is breaking the pattern. All right. So let's go down here and define the prefix version. So the prefix version is the easier one. So return type integer, and we're defining this for the integer class and it's operator plus plus and we have no parameter list right so it's going to be an empty parameter list parameter list means prefix version okay so this is going to be the easiest one of all 
So what we're going to do is we're simply going to increment I, that's all, right? Increment just means add one to. So that's all we're going to do is we're just going to do I plus plus. Okay. Or we could do plus plus I, or we could do I equals I plus one. It doesn't matter because what we're doing here is we're just adding one to this integer variable right here. So however you decide to do that, knock yourself out. It doesn't matter. This is independent from the operator type that we're overloading. Okay. So all we're doing is adding one to I. And once we've done that, we can return what? We have to return an integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to return a copy of ourselves. So we're not going to do return this by itself, right? Because remember, this is the this pointer. We're going to return a copy of ourselves. Okay. So we're saying go to the memory location whose address is in this and whose address is in this, the address of the object itself, right? And so then we're going to dereference that, which is going to grab us the object at that memory address and then return it. So this is a simple class that we're writing here. We're just using simple old variables here, no pointers. We're not managing any dynamic memory or any other types of complex resources. So we're just gonna be doing memberwise assignment. That's gonna be fine for this class. If we were doing something more complicated than that, if we're using dynamic memory, for example, then you'd have to overload the assignment operator and then you know provide constructors and a copy constructor, that sort of thing. But this is a simple example, so we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So our prefix version is done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our postfix version. And the postfix version is going to have the same return type, same name, but we're going to include that dummy parameter. And so that dummy parameter is how we know that this is going to be the version of the operator plus plus that gets called when we do the postfix version. Okay, so dummy parameter in the parameter list equals post fix. So here's a couple things we have to do. We have to, yes, increment that private integer variable. Okay. So that is going to happen. All right. So we have to increment I increment our integer variable. Okay. But we have to return something. We have to return what? Now remember how post fix works. It returns then increments. Okay. So what that means is that we have to return a copy of the integer object in its original state. So by doing that, we're kind of mimicking this behavior. So what do we mean by that? Okay, we're going to preserve the original state of our object. So we'll just create a temporary integer object here. So we'll just say integer uh, temp. Okay, and I'll pass to its constructor the I variable. So when this gets invoked, we're creating a temporary one and we're going to preserve the contents of our I variable. So then we've done that. Now we can increment our integer variable and then we'll return the temporary version. And so that temporary version is what's going to get assigned to J here. So this is our postfix version of the increment operator. So what do we have to do? We have to get the value of I out and then increment I. That's how this works. So we're done with plus plus. So let's go ahead and test it. So we'll see that logic in action. So we'll say J equals plus plus I prefix first. And then we'll look at the state of each of the objects before that assignment statement. So we'll do um, the contents of I, see out I, dot get and then we'll also do the contents of j and then we'll see the contents afterwards so let's go ahead and try it out okay so we can see that before j equals plus plus i was executed we can see that i contains five that's true j contains zero that's true and then after j equals plus plus i we can see that i contains six and j contains six which makes total sense because I was incremented first, which became six, and then that was assigned to our J. Okay. Now let's test our postfix version. Okay. So we'll do I plus plus, and we'll see how that differs. Okay. So let's go ahead and test that. Okay. So you can see that the J shows five and the I shows six, right? Why does J show five? because what was returned by the I object was 
the value before the increment happened. So that value was preserved and assigned to RJ, right? Then after that assignment was done, then the plus plus happened, then the increment happened. And we were able to mimic that logic, to implement that logic by using this temporary integer object. You need this temporary object to preserve the original state to mimic this behavior and if again if you're not understanding the difference between prefix and postfix review that video whose link i put in the description below if you're a student of mine and you don't include this temporary object it's going to be wrong on your assignments so now let's go ahead and do the operator minus minus and it's basically going to be the same thing except we're just going to change from plus plus to minus minus and it's going to behave the exact same way in terms of the postfix and the prefix versions. So we'll just control C, we'll control V, and then we'll change this to minus minus. We'll change this to minus minus. And then we'll do, just to show you that it doesn't matter here how we do this, we'll do um, minus minus I here. And then down here, we'll do I minus minus, okay? Because these statements are just changing the contents of I inside of the object itself. All right, so now that we have that, let's go back up to main and we'll do the prefix version first, minus minus i, and let's test that out. Okay, so you can see that we start off with five and zero, just like before. We had the i integer object initialized to five, so that returned five here. And then j was initialized with zero because of that default argument, so that returned zero here. And so then we did j equals minus minus i. So here, we don't have that special logic, that temporary object happening. So the version that gets returned of the integer object has had its private i variable already decremented. And so that goes from five down to four. And so then that version of itself, right, with the updated variable is returned and then assigned to j. And so then when we do i.get and j.get, we see the four and the four. So now let's do the postfix version. So postfix version, we preserve the state of i before the decrement, right? We emulate that by having that temporary object. So j is going to be assigned the preserved state that contains an i that is 5 in it. And then after that, the i gets decremented down to 4. So we're going to see that this returns 4 and then this returns 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, there you go. So you can see we preserved the state of i before doing the decrement and then return to the preserved state to, again, emulate that postfix logic. So that's everything. So now you know how to overload the increment and decrement operators in both prefix and postfix mode. Thanks for watching.